Hey there everyone, Thais here, back again with another video, and in this video, we're gonna move forward over Linux series. I know, the Linux series is going at a turtle speed, but we're gonna make it there, don't worry. Quality stuff take a little bit time, and I do have other stuff to do. Anyways, let's get started. So in one of the previous video, I gave you an assignment that please go ahead and install CentOS on your virtual machine. Some of you did consider that as an optional assignment. It's not, because CentOS allows me to tinker with a lot of things which uh, Ubuntu doesn't allow me to do. CentOS gives me more freedom to teach as well as to talk about a lot of things and can show you all these things. For example, one of the files which is present in the system is the kernel file, which is super easy to view and probably tinker that a little bit in the CentOS. It is also possible in the Debian side like Ubuntu as well, but there are some issues I don't want to talk about, but uh, yes, yeah, sometimes there are some problems in that. So, moral of the story is, please go ahead and try to install CentOS onto your virtual box. It's gonna be a great exercise, and we're gonna learn a few things on the CentOS, then we'll be jumping on Ubuntu, so we're gonna be jumping around. So, the very first problem that a lot of people saw that while installing the CentOS, what we see is the black screen, which a lot of people don't like. We want to have a graphical user interface. Now, the issue with the graphical user interface is uh, we have a couple of steps to do it. Now, the most easy step is to just type uh, start x. Uh, of course, I have to log in first. But when I type start x, it's not going to work. First, let me just try to log in into my system. So I'm going to click my cursor here. Yes, please capture that. And we're going to log in from the root, which is not at all a good idea. But we'll be tinkering around with the, lo uh, with the root user a little bit lot. A little bit lot a lot in this series. So we're gonna just log in, and there we go. Now the first and easy step is to just say, I want to say uh, simply like start X. This should technically, in theory, uh, should start your X server, means your graphical user interface, but it's not gonna do that. We need to tweak a little bit more in this case. Now here's a quick thing. Go ahead and write a command on your command prompt, which is ping, P-I-N-G, 8.8.8.8, yes, four time eight. And you will notice that you are not able to ping that. That means uh, our system is not configured properly even to talk to the internet. Now, if the system is not configured properly to talk to the internet, then obviously uh, we won't be able to install anything. And that is a big issue. So the first step is how we can do that. Now, in most of the Linux, uh, what we can do is we can run a command that says dhclient. There is a server, name server, in our all of the Linux machine, and we can become a client of it to refresh our name server. And once you run this command, this should work. But there is again an issue. In the CentOS, it's not going to work directly. So it's going to look a little bit jargon right now, but don't worry. Later on, we're going to talk about it. But this network configuration is compulsory. It's necessary uh, for the rest of the series. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into a place known as network scripts. We're going to tinker or change a flag, which is compulsory. Once we have changed this flag, then we're going to become again the client of this DHCP server. And then we're going to update our yum so that we can install anything. And I'm going to talk about a lot in this as we go through. So let's go ahead and first go to that amazing location. So that location is CD. Then you have to press a space. Again, Linux is very sensitive about spaces, uh, the characters. It is a small letter or upper letter. It's very sensitive in that case. When I write something like slash etc and you forget the forward slash at the first, it's going to give you an error. If you, instead of this uh, forward slash, if you write the backslash, it's going to give you again an error. So it should be exactly same. And if you're facing any error, you have 100% writing wrong command. So check that again. So we're going to go into the place slash etc. Then we have to go into sysconfig. And you might have noticed I'm typing just one of these commands and then I have a habit of auto-completing it. I do that using tab key. This is one of the best advice I ever got and I want to give you as well. If you're using the Linux, the tab should be your best friend. Whenever you write anything, just use the tab key to auto-complete it. You're going to save yourself from a lot of trouble. Okay. Then we're going to go into this network-scripts uh, folder. We're going to go into that, so hit enter. Now press ls, and don't worry, we're going to have a whole lot of uh, entire video section about this ls command. It's very powerful. I love that. And we can see that there is one ifcfg-enp0, blah, 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 a very big file. Now we need to change this flag into this from this file. And to change anything inside any file, we need an editor. 
So which editor we're gonna use? Now on the Linux, uh, most of the people uh, favorite people's favorite is VIM, uh, which is very powerful, very popular one. But in the CentOS, it doesn't come as a default. You have to install it. We're gonna do that later on for sure. Right now, the VM is not present. VM, Vim is not present. Uh, we just have VI, which is a little bit older version of Vim. Uh, Visually, the color aspects are not there in the VI, so it's almost the same. And then just try to open this file, which is ifcfg. Again, use the tab. It's going to autocomplete only a little bit, not the entire, because there are multiple options. Then type en and then hit the tab key again. So hit enter. There we go. We have opened up our file. Now use your cursor key. Go at the very end of it. Press I, I for India. And we're going to go at the end of it. And there is a flag that says, no, we want to change that to yes. Okay. Once you have done that, press your escape key, escape key again, and then type colon WQ. Don't miss any of them. Three are important. Colon, W, and Q. Colon is to get away from the insert mode, and uh, colon is not actually basically getting away from the insert mode. It's for es escape is to get away from the insert mode. Then W is that I'm trying to give a command. I'm not trying to write anything. I'm giving you a command. That command is write and quit, W and Q. We're going to hit enter, and there we go. Now that script is changed. That means on boot. I'm going to press control and L to clean up all of my screen. Now, OK, this thing is all done. Now, what we need to do is, uh, first and foremost, we need to now check up that our yum is updated or not. So. In order to update our yum, first and foremost, go ahead and become a client of this. So just say DH client, and there we go. Now my client is already running because before re uh, recording this video, obviously I wanted to get prepared, so that's already running. In your case, it's gonna just wait for a second and then just gonna be okay. Then you simply want to say ping and maybe any uh, open DNS or anything. I'm gonna say 8.8.8.8 four times, hit enter it's going to start pinging there. That means our network connection is all good. Our internet is accessible. Press Control C to stop that. And now we're going to update the yum. So simply just say yum update. And there we go. Our yum is going to get updated. Mine is already updated uh, before recording this video. I updated that, but that's the exact process. Again, it's going to take a little bit while depending on your internet connection. Just onto a side note before we sh uh, say bye bye in this video, yum is almost similar to the apt get into uh, this uh, Debian side of the world or Ubuntu side of the world. In the Red Hat side of the world or CentOS or Fedora, we use yum, which is almost exactly the same uh, package installer and stuff. So that's it. We have learned how we can configure and access internet onto a CentOS machine. Don't worry, eventually we're going to load up the graphical user interface as well. That's going to come up as well, but that's only going to come up. Uh, we're going to comment down in the series that continue Linux series. So post down in the comment section, uh, continue Linux series and hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you're going to say, then only I'm going to continue this series. Otherwise, just say it. I'll stop it. So that's it for this video. I hope you are enjoying. So that's it for this one. Let's catch up in the next one.